Coming up on tonight's broadcast, the worst of the ML. He said it's very rude to the viewer. A catastrophic compendium from four years of eating media lunch. And why do you want to offend your audience? There's little about Kaipoi Station south of the Kaimanawas to hint at the previous life of the stakeholder now farming these gently rolling hills. Former television presenter Jeremy Wells and his wife Pippi have been running sheep and cattle here for nine years. The first years proved to be hard graft as Wells searched for the right mix of stock to produce the best yield. Well, we had mainly merino initially, uh, and we uh, did diversify into a little bit of ostrich. When the bottom fell out of the ostrich meat market, Wells began farming Māori, just as his great-grandfather had in the 1830s. He ran 200 head of South Island Naitahu for a number of years. We did farm Pākehā for a while and we had to give up after about two years because I uh, found them to be very, very tricky to breed. Uh, they were fussy eaters, um, quite selfish at times. I found that the Māori were very intensive. Uh, Pākehā, I'd get around about 14 Pākehā per hectare, uh, whereas with the Māori, particularly the, the Tūhoi, I get around 24 per hectare. Wells blames political correctness for the decline in the market for Māori and Pākehā. He threw in the towel two seasons back, but still breeds dwarves recreationally. Yeah, I do like my dwarves. Uh, they uh, remind me a little bit of uh, human Shetland ponies. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Yeah. We've had about seven or eight now, and uh, I do like them. I really do. A lot of fun. Yeah. Excuse me! Oh. I've got a bone to pick with you. Eating media lunch. Main drives. Across the line. to pick with me. Yes, I have. Eating Media Lunch had a segment on Coronation Street, which I watched with my 22-year-old boarder, Trevor. Back in the day, the chicks on Coro or Corrie were mostly bush pigs. But these days, the toddy is top class. And up for it. Do you want a cup of tea, Trevor? Yes, please. Okay. At approximately 9.45, I returned to the lounge with my supper and was shocked <gasps> to see a scene on the screen which could only be described as pornographic. Mana is porn with a difference. Unlike most skin flicks, the story is based on actual events. It will feature Māori actors speaking Māori dialogue and wearing traditional Māori costumes in a $2 million reconstruction of colonial New Zealand. According to its creator, the two-hour epic will be the world's first historically accurate, culturally specific, fuck flick. Why set this film in the 19th century? The historic setting provides a perfect opportunity uh, to challenge the traditional constructs of European and Māori. 
Um, the film was set in 1850, which, as most historians would agree, was during the ascendancy of European culture over Māori culture. Pornographically, it's uh, the salt and pepper combinations are endless. Coming out. Okay, yep. Okay, guys. The orgy scenes, it's claimed, are played out on the actual sites of historic Māori Pa. The sequences we shot uh, in the Pa site and uh, in the village, those sequences are entirely in Māori. I mean, we went to a hell of a lot of trouble uh, to get the lingo right. I, I have an intense belief in this film. You know, I, I guess I just like my porn to be intelligent and relevant. Anal Mana won't be just another suck and fuck film. I mean, obviously there will be plenty of that, but I, I want to explore a particularly mouldy perspective on the erotic. I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, you're still going to get your full facial cum shots, uh, you, you're still going to get your DPs, your felching, spit roasting, anal, obviously, but behind all of that is this cloak of history, you know? According to Al, the interracial fuckfest that climaxes the film is a metaphor for the incipient biculturalism that would later define the emergent New Zealand. What I saw in the presence of a young man was embarrassing, disgusting and unnecessary. And needless to say, I used the remote. Shame on you, TVNZ. And shame on you, Jeremy. Um, it's true we do get a lot of complaints about eating media lunch and we take those very seriously. Uh, as a public broadcaster we're very conscious about maintaining standards but unfortunately the TVNZ charter means we have to show this shit. <laughs> but he has to satisfy the judges. Because the last thing you want is for your cat to get pregnant. So I'm going to go in just here. Oh. With so much trouble in the world today, I find myself drawn to one of the gallery's most dramatic pieces, to seek solace in its meditations. Salvatore Rossa has given us a rich, dark, swirling rendition of war. I am a Russian Orthodox Christian, so for me, I was very offended to see advertising on television which uses the image of Jesus. Because people ring at the worst possible times. Vodacom's offers a Bluetooth hands-free set with every new subscription. Oh, g'day, Dad. Yeah, I'm on the cross. Hands-free calling with Vodacom's. Call now to sign up. You'd be a mug not to. Jesus was not Australian. Getting your point across to talkback hosts is never easy. But imagine how hard it is for a stutterer or a stammerer. Patience and understanding go a long way, but in the cut and thrust of mindless radio blather, some of our top talk professionals are seriously lacking. How would our talk show hosts deal with a stuttering caller interrupting the flow of their shows? We hired a man with a pronounced stutter to test some of our foremost broadcasters. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't mind doing that. First up, veteran case, sportscaster... No Murray Deacon. Well, we've got a caller online. Barry, you've got a question? Um, why do you think it, 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 Spell it out. It, it, well, I don't think we're going to get the question. After just 11 seconds, Deacon cuts in, then tries to guess our caller's question. Well, why do I think, or why do we think, that there has been a split? And gets it entirely wrong. It is time now for Talkback, and in Talkback today... Mary Lambie claims to have interviewed over 10,000 people, but all that experience counted for little when confronted by our stutterer. Morning, Bob. Uh, m m morning, Mary. How, how are you? Excellent, thanks. I, I, I think these, it, 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 these emissions should... 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 should...
should, should be introduced, should, I think, is what you're trying to say, should, Bob. Should, should, uh, uh, Thank you, Bob. Lambie comes in at eight seconds, and worse, barely contains a smirk there and there. Mary Lambie actually lost her job on Good Morning because of that fiasco with the stutterer. Really? Yes, well, you can't have a presenter on a major show acting like that. Presenters should never show their emotions. They should, they should be poker-faced, like this. See? But how would these efforts stack up against the godfather of New Zealand talkback, Leighton Smith? News talks to me, 11.29, Eddie, morning. Uh, morning, Leighton, it's Eddie here. I've got, I'm just standing outside here, uh, uh, Leighton, uh, and it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day for, for quite a while. That's terrific, Eddie. I hope, uh, it, hope now, it stays that way. Now, I wanted to, to touch on a, a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is, that, look, Leighton, I went to uh, intermediate school uh, in the in a no, no, 1960s here, here in Auckland. They... Just hang on, Eddie. It's 11.30, stories make... Smith allowed just six seconds before seeking refuge in some headlines. A disappointing end to our experiment. In the hullabaloo about brethren and testicles, there was one election promise that was overlooked. Winston Peters talked about reducing the length of pofery, or traditional Maori welcome. It's an idea that probably would have found favour with many impatient Pākehā if anyone had taken it seriously. But how open are our broadcasters to extended welcomes in Te Reo? We decided to test the patience and cultural awareness of some of our leading talk professionals. Um, yes, where are we going? First up, talkback oh, host gone, and mayor, uh, Michael Laws. Go and talk to Hector. Hector, good morning to you. Kia ora, Michael. <coughs> tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. OK, see you later, stupid man. Hello, James, good morning to you. Laws allowed six tenakotos, but insulted our caller and his culture. He also has a bad aura. And welcome back to City Talk. Back. South yeah, Islanders have a reputation for being dismissive of Maori culture. Let's see how they handled the Tenakoto challenge at Southland TV. We're going to go straight to the pages and take a call from Auckland and say good evening to John. Kia ora. Tenakoto, 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 Tenakoto. Southland TV allowed a staggering 18 Tenakotos. They were patient, and although they laughed at our caller, Shadbolt does have a nice smile. Whilst the South Islanders showed the most patience, they were also the most bewildered. A disappointing end to our experiment. Em seguida, ele está ligando para a rádio e sendo atacado por um cachorro. Achei muito ridículo. Using a number of disguises and bogus names, I called a number of call-in shows. Then, using a stunt dog left over from Zena, I carried out my experiment, allowing the dog to attack me during the call. We began our experiment by calling the new current affairs sensation of the Sky Network, The Larry Williams Show. A quick-fire intellectual interview show aimed at high achievers and retirees. Jock, your question, please. Yeah, g'day, Larry. Look, my question's for uh, Deborah and uh, the other woman. Look, now, why, and it's a serious question, why are there no uh, Maori pedophiles and other <laughs> All right, we've lost you there, Jock, but the, the question is, why no Maori pedophiles? There are Maori pedophiles. Williams showed almost no concern about our caller. And although Coddington at least showed some facial concern, she quickly moved on to her favourite subject, pedophilia. There are Maori pedophiles. The other woman just looked on. Next up, Christian Radio's own morning madhouse on Radio Rima. Uh, Kevin, good morning. G'day, Bob. How are you? Oh, that's better. Yeah, I'm on a landline. 
by now. Okay. And look, really enjoying your show. Uh, now, look, my mother, she's uh, been on life support now for uh, probably going on nine years. And while it's a difficult time for all of us... She... <laughs> I will come back to Kevin in just a minute. Morgan says, Kathy, if you can just check on Once Kevin. again, the host laughed while our caller suffered a sustained mauling. An offer to call back to check on him never happened. Back to TV now, where veteran broadcaster Paul Holmes was padding out his low-budget show with a property talkback. All right, uh, Keith. Hi there. Uh, look, my question is regarding the fact that the, with the property market going through the... Get out! Get out! <laughs> well, I thank you very much, Keith. Hello, Marnie. <laughs> Holmes laughed while our caller was savagely disfigured. His guests laughed. And he laughed again. We decided to head south of the Bombay Hills, where people are more caring. Southland TV seemed like the perfect test subject. And a panel show of health professionals would surely bring us a more positive result. Right, we have a caller on the line. Hey there, Bruce. Yeah, hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, I've got a question. Uh, I uh, have had, uh, it's not, uh, diagnosed as asbestosis uh, about four or five years ago. What I really need to know, uh, excuse me, hold on, let's get this dog on. Get out, no, get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out. Sorry, hold on, just three seconds. Get, get down. Sorry, sorry. And, what, what I really needed to know was if people are not going to diagnose Get down! Get down! i <laughs> Sorry, Bruce. If, if you can sort your dog out and perhaps come back to us. <laughs> oh, dear. How many, how many PHOs are there around Southland? While one panel member seemed concerned, the majority laughed. The host had no empathy with our caller, who would be in serious pain by the end of the ordeal. A few weeks ago, a simple sheep eclipsed even our highest achievers to become the most famous New Zealander in the world. Thanks to local media warm fuzzies, Shrek the Sheep quickly became an international symbol for New Zealand, single hoofedly reinforcing all those stereotypes we've been trying to shake for years. When I came to New Zealand, everyone was talking about this Shrek. Eu achei que o Shrek era um ator, um político, uma pessoa famosa. Não, mas aí eu vi na TV que o Shrek era uma ovelha. Foi aí que eu percebi que eu estava num país bem novo. Shrek, whose real name was Rupert, first rose to prominence in local news broadcast. The sharing of Shrek was the live television event of the year, attracting 1.1 million viewers. Now, don't wave, children, please. It's very irritating to people at home. Don't wave. The Bull Marino had become an international star in the space of just a few hours. But this afternoon, the stellar career of the world's most recognisable sheep came to an abrupt end. Despite this programme's best efforts to intervene, Shrek was slaughtered in a routine home kill on this farm. Authorities blamed a clerical error. What you're watching is secretly obtained footage of the actual events. These were Shrek's final moments. Split from the main flock, the lovable ovine seems almost cognizant of his impending doom. After spending a few final minutes with friends, the former Prime Ministerial confidant is taken aside and led to a custom-built killing shed. With his trademark jacket still draped around his soon-to-be slit neck like a superhero's cape, Shrek is unceremoniously dragged by the hooves. Then, under the gaze of our cameras, the Maverick Marino is martyred. If 
This is the man who ended Shrek's life and career. It may shock you to know that he was just doing his job. جيت لهالبلده حتى اشو حتى اهرب من هذول المتعصبين والمتشددين بس شفت هنا انا من جيت نفتح التلفزيون القاعده تقلب القناه القاعده انا ما اريد جهالي يشوفون القاعده هاي هذا الشيء انا ما اريد اشوفه بهالبلده Iraq 2004 The scene is all too familiar Islamic militants make their demands as the life of another captured Westerner hangs in the balance. But this is no ordinary terrorist ransom video. <laughs> Believe it or not, you're watching the most popular video in the Middle East. But these aren't actors, they're terrorists. Experts have confirmed this tape's authenticity as a new kind of Al-Qaeda tape, a kind of bloopers tape. Intelligence experts believe the bloopers tape is part of a charm offensive, 
designed to win support for terrorist causes by using humor. I believe what we're seeing here is a carefully orchestrated attempt by al-Qaeda to alter its image from one of fanatics to one of fun addicts. هاي مو اول مره التلفزيون يحكي على العرب بهالطريقه وهذا شيء ما مقبول بالنسبه لنا وخصوصا من يحكون على النبي الرسول هذا شيء كلش مهم للعرب وتدفع بحياتك على هالشيء بس هاي اللقطه اللي طلعتوها ذاك اليوم على الجولف كانت حلوه Despite high-level protests, C4 plans to show both this and the Al-Qaeda bloopers material in September. Hello, good evening. This is the Fuck News. Our top story tonight. The European Union has banned imports of pet birds in an effort to curb the spread of bird flu. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was something about the news. A woman is reading the news while riding a man like a pony. A fourth Indonesian has been confirmed to have died from bird flu. At the same time, China announced a new outbreak among geese and chickens in the eastern Anhui province. Two years after he was pulled from a farmyard hideaway in Iraq, Saddam Hussein has finally gone on trial for crimes against humanity. The 24-hour service is aimed at businessmen and has proved hugely popular in its native France. Britain has been pushing for a ban after the parrot died of the H5N1 strain, potentially deadly to humans. While in quarantine... There's little doubt the fuck news presents a heady mix of sex and death. But critics say the new format represents the ultimate dumbing down of the news. Then she is doing the weather like this. To the weather now. A ridge of low pressure over northern Europe will bring scattered showers to the Baltic coast and south across Poland, Germany and the Netherlands. Northern France will see showers clearing with brisk northerlies easing by tomorrow. Spain and Italy will be mostly fine, but expect evening showers along the Mediterranean coast. TV3 has confirmed reports that will run an edited version of the fuck news from next year. <laughs>
Next, a hidden camera trial within a hidden camera trial. When we learned the target crew was setting up a sting at a friend's house, we decided to get our cameras in first to see just how professional target's technicians really are. Former target analyst Ian Orchard agreed to help us. Well, here are our target technicians arriving to set up their cameras in the lounge, testing their cameras. Yeah, that's working. Here we are in the kitchen, and they seem to be taking a lot of time to set up the cameras, Ian. Yes, this is important to take into account the, the best light possible and to get the right coverage with the room size. They're not exactly in a hurry to install the cameras, Ian. No, so far they seem very casual, but then again, there's more or less no time limit on doing the job. Thirsty work, this. What you do? Ah. And he's cleaning that up with a T-shirt from the laundry. Now, here's our other technician on the phone, but it's not to his boss. Hello, Lisa speaking. Oh, hi. Hi, how are you? Oh, good. Good, what's up to? Um, I don't, I, don't have, I don't have very much time. Right. What do you like me to do to you? Oh, just... Let me put your c*** in my mouth. Yeah. Now, technician A's got the homeowner's razor, but should he be shaving down there? And technician B seems to have got off the phone and... He's got no reason to be going into that room doing that. Yes, he seems to be rifling through the homeowner's underwear drawer. And now he's looking under the bed. Seems to have found a magazine. Looks as though he's really lost focus here. This doesn't appear to be work-related at all. Surely that's inappropriate. No, I don't know. Back in the kitchen, he seems to have found his way onto the hob. Mm -hmm. Should he be using the stove, Ian? No, he shouldn't be using the stove for anything. Meanwhile, back in the kitchen, technician B seems to have undressed himself completely. He's using a lot of glad wrap. Well, that glad wrap isn't that expensive, but it does belong to the homeowner and not to the technician. He seems to be in some pain. Here's Technician A looking a little worse for wear. What's he doing there, Ian? Uh, I'd say he's smelling the flowers. Surely that's inappropriate. استوني جت لنيوزيلندا والأشياء اللي دا شوف على التلفزيون أشياء يعني ما صايرة بالعالم شنو هالدولة أي دولة بالعالم تخلي ال ال الرجال يعمل مرتة كأنه هي بوردة هذا الشيء مو طبيعي. Surely that's inappropriate. Well. Now this doesn't look promising. إيه بس طلع ما على التلفزيون وقام يبول على العالم على التلفزيون ما يصير هذا مو مو فت شيء مو يسوي لازم أي واحد يقدر يسوي على التلفزيون ما يصير. The toilet is just around the corner. Surely that's inappropriate. Surely. The Enough is Enough march in Wellington proves to be one of the great PR disasters of all time. In short, it looked like a Nazi rally. So this year, Tamaki's crew have gone white. And Enough is Enough has become traditional family values. It still means that gays are evil, but it sounds a little nicer. Awesome, man. What's Proverbs 17.5? Well, you'll have to read it and find out. What is a family? 
You know what a family is, don't you? What do you mean, what is a family? Mum and dad, kids. Husband, wife, mum, dad and kids. No comment, brother. Just minutes into the march, and some feral fanatics interrupt Brian's destiny. You're a cult leader, and New Zealand doesn't need you. But the first boot comes from the other side. It would be easy to write these people off as a collection of small-minded ninnies who are simply responding to the fear-mongering of moral entrepreneurs like Tamaki. Strong families, strong nations, strong communities, strong families. Woo! But you could almost say the same thing of the anti-destiny crew. Bigotry, USA share, pushing across your own values and expense of others. Who seem to be taking Brian as seriously as he takes himself. Jesus is love. You're a bigot. Jesus came to tolerate love, not hatred. And judging by the way you dress, I wouldn't actually be surprised if you're not gay, mate. You're looking a bit gay there with your gold rings. Hey, that's right, eh, Brian? You're a cult leader. You just want to get into government. Hey, hey bro. What's going on? Why don't you just protest in peace, Why don't you just protest in peace? Peace, mate. Hey, we are for families, mate. What, you are for... Exactly. Love everybody. Love diversity. If you're planning your own march, you'll need to assemble some signs. You can use snips, sticky tape and card if you like. T-shirts with catchy slogans. Some goons in bad suits. And a few guys who have obviously watched The Matrix one time too many. Tamaki's men are wired to a sophisticated network of Christian counter-terrorists with satellite connectivity, utilising the latest technology with full $10 texting capability. This man's on the Talk 200 plan have no messages. and loving it. For the anti-Christian crowd, it's feral fashion all the way. There's no need to run a brush through you here, and clothing is optional. Is this your first march? No, it's the second one. Is this your first march today? Yeah, no, come in, eh? The last one was uh, protesting against the ARC rates increase some months ago, but... Uh, Sorry, sir. From the shafts of strife and war, make her praises heard afar. God defends New Zealand. Historically, the family has been under attack at various times from saber-toothed tigers, Catholics, witches, feminists, contraception, the film festival and Shortland Street. How it's managed to survive so far is anyone's guess. To the anti-Destiny crew, the march represents a scary spectre, a rise of a religious fundamentalist movement that threatens to drag us back to the Dark Ages. But while 10,000 is an impressive protest by any standard, let's not forget that elsewhere in the city, there were 1.2 million people engaging in their own form of traditional family activities. If Jesus was gay, what do you think he would think of this march? If Jesus was gay, what would he think of this march? I don't believe Jesus is gay. Number one, he ain't gay. And number two, he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Well, he's not. Uh, Jesus wasn't gay. I can't even think of what if Jesus being gay. That Jesus isn't gay. Okay, he, he didn't have any kids, though, did he? Well, he mucked around with a lot of 12, 12 guys. If Jesus was gay, what would he think of this march? No, he's not. He, he, he is not. He's not. Oh, he's not gay. If he was, what would he think of this match? Uh, let's, let's, um, what do you call it? Um, but he's, he's not. That's the end of story. And he'd, he'd be all for this, yeah. Even if he's gay? No, he's not gay. See why he's like to pass on a red thing.
我到厨房发现我九岁的儿子正在强迫把他的猫放在炉子里边。我问他你在干什么？他说我从电视里边学的。Is there a difference between a man forcing himself sexually on a horse and a woman having sex with a horse? A man doing what on a horse? New Zealand pussy. Yeah. Discuss. Uh, How a woman can't have sex with a horse? She might have an orgasm, but she can't have sex. Why not? <laughs> how can she? <laughs> My God, man. How am I, how am I to answer that? I don't know what medication you're on, Jeremy. Would you rather be fashionable or deaf? <laughs> What is a farm? A farm? Yeah. What is a farm? Yeah. What kind of question is that? What do you mean? Would I rather be fashionable or deaf? Um, I would rather be... Wait. Oh, that's impossible to answer. <laughs> uh, hey, Jeremy. Oh, stay, stay in the car. Sorry, stay in the oh. car. Stay in the car. Would you consider going back into serious journalism? No, look, I'm having such a great time with uh, Investigate magazine and the stories we keep on breaking like Dachshund in New Plymouth and um, the Lab 3 debacle and a whole host of other bits and pieces. Sorry, Ian, can I just interrupt you for a second? Um, race 7 is already underway. Let's join the call. Pam Bramack being called up on the length away. In behind them, giddy up and go, baby, in Southern Kiwi. From all of us, from all of us, from all of us, from all of us, from all of us. From all of us here. From all of us here at Eating Media Lunch. <laughs> Have a ha. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> He said, it's very rude to the viewer, and why do you want to offend your audience? He said he saw the man treat his uh, dog like was his baby. Uh, he thought it brought shame to his family. And that's our show. I hope you and yours have a wonderful holiday. God bless you all. And I really do mean it when I say from all of us here at Eating Media. <coughs> Camera two. Merry Christmas. And a... Uh, at number 73, the national anthem and lovely Kiwi scenery make a great combo, but it's even better when you add some biff.
and referee Walker was punched and kicked. They show Russell Crowe in the black jacket involved in a brawl outside a bar. And this is just what boxing doesn't need. This show was made with funding from New Zealand on air. <coughs>